healing is of God. Praise God. And we'll just watch the healing school. And um, we know we we um, gave us some sleep some time ago where we made some pledges. And um, we know some people are already redeeming their pledges. And I just want to give you a gentle reminder. Hallelujah. By the pledges you made. For it's not by power, neither is it by mind, but by the Spirit of God. Helping you to fulfill that which you have pledged unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the end of this month, we'll be um, launching um, the Healing School uh, we launch, you know, we, we, we said in the beginning of the year, our partnership, we'll be doing the Healing School and then we'll be doing Love War TV. Do you remember that? Do you remember? Praise the Lord. So, and now that with the zone, the, the change in the zone, is we will be having our launch at the end of this month. Praise the Lord. You know, we've been looking at um, the spirituality of life, that life is really spiritual. That life is so spiritual that even the things that seem normal, that happens day-to-day routine, there's a spirit behind it. It's spiritual. And that if we are not aware, if we're not conscious of the spirituality of life, we, we, we miss out and sometimes we can become victims instead of being victors. Praise the Lord. We, 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 we looked at um, Ezekiel. Remember, we look at Ezekiel. We remember in Ezekiel we saw the three spirits that are playing on the earth. We saw the spirit of grace. Remember that? Let's turn to it. Let's turn to it. So I'm um, sorry, Zechariah chapter 12. Let's turn to that. Okay, let's look at verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And then he yeah, says, um, And I'll pour upon the house of David, this is the, the, the Lord speaking to the prophet, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look unto me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for his holy son, and it shall, there shall be bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Talking about, we know who, the, who was pierced. That's Jesus. But we're talking about here, it tells us about this the spirit of grace. I'll be poured out in these in this last days. Praise the Lord. And if we go to verse 2 of the same, of the, of the same chapter, we'll see, uh, read from verse 1 to, to, to pick catch up to verse 2, it says, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth and formed, formed what? The spirit of man within him. So there's a spirit within a man. Are you with me? So when it just flesh, in us, we have a spirit. We are essentially spirit beings. We have a soul and we live in this physical body. And God, who is a spirit, relates to our spirit, which is inside of us. So he's, he's telling us here that there's a spirit formed within man. We, we, I can't see your spirit, or I can see your body. So inside of you is a spirit being. And God is a spirit. God relates to that spirit. God contacts that spirit. And so we see, again, like we read in verse 10, spirit of grace. And then if we go to chapter 13 of the same book, Praise the Lord. Look at verse 2 there. He said, It shall come to pass in that day which we are living now, said the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. Praise the Lord. Idols, the names of the idols out of the land. And they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and listen to this now, and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Praise God. So here it tells us that there's an unclean spirit. There's a spirit that's unclean. And that unclean spirit is working. It's causing idolatry. It's causing the idols to be in the land. So we, we have man being the spirit and God's spirit of grace being poured. 
and then we see also the unclean spirit, its activities. So we, we, what, what, the point we're trying to make is to bring to our consciousness, our awareness that there are sp- the spiritual activities 24-7, every second of the day. Either you're yielding to the spirit of grace or you're yielding to the other spirit. There's no middle ground. There is no middle ground. You're, you know, you're either here or you're on the other side. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we see that there is a spirit at work in us who are born of God. The spirit of God is at work in us. And for the others, let's see what's at work in them. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Life is so spiritual. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 2, we look, we just picked up from verse 1 and 2 to, to, to see. He's talking about us who are now um, children of, of God. He says, and you has he quickened who were dead in trespass. You were, you're no longer, you were dead in trespasses and sin. Where in, in time past, you walk according to the course of this age or this world, according to the prince of the power of the earth. It, it, didn't, just, it, it didn't just leave us in darkness so I would not know what that prince of, of the power of the earth is. It says, the spirit, because that prince of the power of the earth is a spirit. It says, the spirit that now walketh in where? In the children of disobedience. This is spirit at work. So either, either it's that the spirit of grace at work in you, producing gracious things, or the spirit of disobedience walking in the person, producing uncleanliness. Are, are you with me? So we, we become aware of that, and then we become aware of these, these spiritual realities of, of life. We are more conscious. We are more conscious. And then it helps us to um, really walk in this life in, in victory. In victory, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we, we saw also that there are three realms. of Three realms. We saw the heaven, and we saw the earth, and we saw beneath the earth. Praise the Lord. We saw that in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. We saw, you know, that Jesus Christ, um, because of, he, he submitted himself to death, even death at the cross. Because of that reason, God highly exalted his name and gave him a name that's above every name, that is named in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. So we see, we, I mean, we've been looking at this study, and we saw that the spirit, the, the spirit of God is from heaven. And the spirit, this unclean spirit, comes from beneath the earth. And they, they're trying to, and, and what, are they, what are both spirits trying to do? They're trying to influence man. God wants to influence you to do his will. And this other spirit wants to influence people to do his own will. Praise God. Even we saw that Jesus said in John chapter 8, he says that I am from above, you are from beneath. He was speaking to the, um, the, the Pharisees and scribes of his days, talking about his origin, where he came from. He said he came from above. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we, 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 we remember in, in John chapter 3, we see that he says that he that is from above is above all. If you are from, from, from above, if the Spirit of God lives in you, you are superior to all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, we, though we are physically here, we, we, we are in heaven. We are in heaven. Praise God. And when we are conscious of that, then we, we, we become aware of our, uh, uh, our superior, our nature being superior because of our origin. Praise the Lord. And then we've been unique as well because of where we come from, from above. Hallelujah. And so we we, we will continue to look at how this now plays in our day-to-day work. I just want us to look at Ephesians chapter 1 and look at verse 20 to 21 and talking about Jesus, talking about his authority, where he is. And, and 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 how we are, we are connected with him, just to kind of strengthen in our in our consciousness our origin where we are. Praise the Lord. Pick up from verse twenty. He says, talking about Jesus. Let's pick up from verse nineteen. So we're getting in contest. Paul was praying. While he was praying, he was praying um, for the church in Ephesus that they, they, their eyes of understanding be enlightened, that they, they, they that's why they can know. They can know. Know the, their calling. They might, they, so they can know who they are. 
who they are and whose they are. Praise the Lord. In verse 19, he says, he's talking about, about, about the power. He says, and he's, he's talking about this knowledge, understanding. He says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? According, he's trying to describe his power as at work, that is working on our behalf to our advantage. He says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Praise the Lord. Christ was raised from the dead according to the scripture. And that's so true. I believe that with all my heart. Praise the Lord. And not only was he raised, he was set and, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. Listen to the next verse. Far, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Praise the Lord. And then he says, and he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Meaning, Jesus Christ, being the name of Jesus Christ, be given to the church for the church advantage. For our advantage. Praise the Lord. And then look at chapter 2, look at verse 6. So I'm trying to establish in our consciousness where we are. Even though we are here physically, where we are spiritually. Our position spiritually. Look at it, verse 6. He says, and he has raised us. Are you among the us? I am. Praise the Lord. He has raised us up together. And made us sit together. Where? Where? In heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. So we are seated where Christ is right now. In the spirit, we are there. We're in a place of authority. Praise the Lord. So we should not be um, intimidated by the forces of darkness at all. Because we are in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. We are in him. And we have been given his name to our, to our, to our advantage. We have his name. Praise the Lord. And so we, we begin to we establish as well when Jesus said um, in Luke chapter 10, when he says that, do not rejoice, verse 19, that um, spirits, he didn't, let's, let's look at it, please. In, in, in Luke chapter 10, I'm just trying to establish so that we, we, we know who we are, where we are, in the spirituality of our life. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Jesus sent out 70 men to preach the gospel, and they returned back with reports, with testimonies, verse 17. And the servant returned again with joy, saying, Lord, Lord, look at what they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through what? Through our strength. Through our education. Through his name. Through his name. So in his name, they are subject to us. They don't have this, this, this they don't, they don't, there's no option. But look at Jesus' reply to them in verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And in verse 19, he says, Behold, be aware. Behold, put it before you. Always, let it be. Behold, you are beholding it. Praise the Lord. Holding it all the time in your, in, in your mind. And remembering, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he says, and nothing, whether they're using the air, prince of power of the air, or water, whatever, he says, nothing shall by what? Any means hurt you. You got to, you got to take that scripture and meditate on it until it becomes part of you. Because we're living in, in the day and age where we, there's so many things happening, you know, or, you know, in the last days where they were trying to use chemical weapons, all these kind of things to try and, you know, you know what I'm saying? But when the scripture becomes alive in you, Jesus said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's awesome. Awesome. Awesome declaration by the Lord. Hallelujah. So, and that word power, power there, it seems as if, it seems as if it's power. But what he's saying, he said, I've given you authority over all the ability of the enemy. And nothing of his shall by enemies hurt you. 
That's what Jesus Christ was saying. And in verse 20, he made, he made a very remarkable statement. In verse 20, he says, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. So, so I cast out devils. Ah, praise God, they are always... Jesus said, mm, mm, mm. In this rejoice not. That what? That what? It didn't say devils. They said spirits. The word that is puma, wind. Spirits are subject unto you. Spirits. I know some people are afraid of ghosts. They say, There's a ghost in this house. They said they don't want to buy ghost haunted houses. Jesus is saying that they are subject to you. Hallelujah. He said, But rejoice. Because your names, how many of you know? How many of you know that you know that you know your name is written in heaven? I know that. Glory to God. See, this is what this, this is what causes you to rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus Christ. And so we, we, we begin to explore this spirituality of life, this conflict of this unclean spirit and the spirit of grace. You know trying to demonstrate, trying to do their works on the earth. And that, and that we've been looking at. We looked at the dragon. You remember we looked at the dragon? And we looked at in Revelation chapter 12. We looked at the dragon. And we looked at the dragon in light of the scriptures. That that dragon is that who? That old serpent, the Bible says. You remember? Called the devil and Satan, the dragon. And we looked at the, the structure of the dragon, how that the, he has a head and he has a tail, and how that he operates, how he operates with the head. With the head, we know that we saw in the scripture that the head is the political governments, hallelujah, municipals, governments, councils, all those people in place of authority, how he uses those to, 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 to influence the things on the earth. And we saw the tail, how he uses the tail, using false prophets. Hallelujah. We saw that in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15. Do you remember the scriptures? Praise the Lord. And then we saw that the dragon got angry and he said he was going to make war with the seed of the woman. That is, those that will keep the testimony of Jesus Christ. You remember that? And so, okay, let's look at that. that, that, that because some, some people are looking at me very strangely. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12. Look at verse 17. So, it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which, 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 which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. These are Christians. So, to, to ignore that there's no war, then <laughs> there will be casualty. Because he's telling us here that the dragon has made up his mind that he's going to war with us. He's going to war with us. So we are in, we are in war. We are, it's a conflict. And it's a spiritual war. It's not a physical war. We can't see this. We can't see the dragon. We can't see his networking. They are spirit beings. Praise the Lord. Remember we saw in, in, in um, Ephesians chapter 2, it says, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walks in the children of disobedience. So those in the power of authority, he's working them, in them to change laws. To make funny laws, to change things that are, un, to make to make ungodliness popular, and slowly introducing it so that we people become comfortable with it, and then at the end brings in the full work, and the people they, nobody will know that things just slowly just chipping it in there, chipping it in there, and then we lose our guard, and all of a sudden the full work comes in, you know, is that's what they do, they're changing the law, making all those things, and and he, he decides to make war with us. And the, the, the good thing is, we are in the position of advantage. Praise the Lord. And that's why we, we come to church to study scriptures, to see where we are and how to, to wage this war. How to wage this war. The reason being that, you know, in Hosea chapter 4, remember the Bible says about people perish for lack of knowledge. Not that knowledge, he said they pray for lack of knowledge because they, they reject knowledge. They reject, when the knowledge is given to them, they reject it. So it's, it's, they reject the knowledge. Knowledge is there. Like now we're sharing knowledge. Some people don't believe that there is a devil. Some people think it's an ideology. 
is a fringe of your imagination. And if you don't believe that there's a devil, then you don't believe that there's God because God says there's a devil. I don't, you see what I'm saying? So if you don't believe that there's a devil and he exists, then you don't truly believe in God because God's word tells us that we have an enemy and his name is the devil. You see? To think that it's just a frame of imagination or just an idea, then that person is being deceived. And then what will happen to that person? That person will become a casualty in the war because he will lose his guard. Praise the Lord. And that's why coming to church is very, very important. Very important. As we come here like this, we are fellowship with one another. The Spirit of God is moving among us. Things are happening in our spirit. Hallelujah. God is ministering to us. They talk. I might be talking about this and something else is popping up in your spirit. Praise God. And that's why we encourage people to come to fellowship, to come to church. Very important. Very, very important. You know, I've said it over and over again that I like watching documentaries, but it's animal um, wildlife. And I like watching lions. And you see how lions, though they, are, they might not be the biggest animal in, in the wild, but God has put the fears of lion in all the other animals. That's, yeah, that, that's how it is. And so you see that they might see some herd of buffaloes. They will not just charge into that buffalo. No, no, no. They know they do that. That would, that would be suicidal. They know that. So what they do, they harass the buffalo. And they all scatters. And they, 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 what they do, they, they separate one from the whole herd. That's the one they launch out for. You see? And this, this strategy is, is, is same spiritually. Oh, don't go to church today. You're tired. Oh, don't. Slowly separating that person from the bunch, from, from the brethren. And before you know that person is attacked. And you think, oh, they don't, nobody, nobody cares for me. You see, well, these are those things, the natural things teaches us sometimes spiritual principles. Spiritual principles. That's what he does. He separates that person from the herd or that, that, um, that buffalo and then attack. And there's only, sometimes there's only one, not two or three of them. And bring that, that, the, the, the beast down. So, as Christians, the Bible tells us that we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Like we're here, you, 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 you're, you're being, your, your spirit is being uplifted as we're reading scriptures. Things are changing in you. You're empowered. You're getting knowledge. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, that's why we, 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 we keep, you know, that's why we say people should come in and, and, and get blessed. Hallelujah. So we see there that there's, we, there's, there's war. There's war. We're in a war. And, uh, and we, we saw how the dragon uses his tail to the first prophet in Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 9, to kill souls. To kill souls. Souls are very important to God. Jesus Christ came and died for every soul. All souls are mine, say the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 18. All the souls, both the woman's soul, the man's soul, the father, the mother, they all belong to the Lord. And the soul is so precious. The value of the soul, Jesus said this, he said, this, he said what shall a man gain if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? So the value, you want to put it on balance, the value of a soul, this whole world, is not, not even equivalent. So the soul of a human being is very important. It's very important. And that's why we, we talk about winning souls, bringing them, converting them to the Lord, letting them know that the, Jesus Christ has paid the price, letting them know that Jesus Christ loved them, letting them know that God is not mad at them anymore because Jesus Christ has paid the price, the full price. Praise the Lord. And so we, the battle is a battle for the soul. And that's why we evangelize, we have all these programs, we, we, we go out to get the souls into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. See, looking at um, Revelation chapter 12, look at something interesting in verse 10. We have been empowered by God to cast out devils. Every one of us, everyone that is a believer in Jesus Christ has the power and the right to drive out devils. They are defeated. Praise God. Let, let, let's, let's pick it up from verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. It says, And the great dragon was cast out, so that we will not be in doubt about what that, who that great dragon is. 
So that old serpent. That old serpent in Genesis, how he, he went and deceived Eve, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Listen, this was in heaven. This was a battle in heaven. <clears throat> the dragon and his messengers, which is angels, were fighting against Michael and his angels. You pick it up from verse, verse 8. You see that there. But he could not prevail. Because he could not prevail, he was cast down from heaven to the earth. Listen to what happened when he was cast down from heaven. In verse 10, he says, And I heard a loud voice saying, Where? In, in the earth? In heaven. What were they saying? Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So, if you want to experience the kingdom, you want to experience the salvation of God, he has to be driven out. The Bible says, give, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, says, give no place to the devil. Don't give him place in your mind. Don't give him place in your body. Don't give him place in your finances. Don't give him any place. Hallelujah. Don't give him place at all in your thought life. Cast him out. Praise the Lord. And so, when he was cast out, the result was the kingdom. The kingdom. And what is the kingdom of God? The Bible tells us is what? Righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if you're not experiencing that, know that there's some, something might be wrong somewhere. If we should be, we are in the kingdom of God now. I said we are in the kingdom of God now. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 tells us that he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom of his dear son. We are there right now. And so we should be experiencing righteousness, peace and joy. In the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Amen. And this is so important. You remember when Jesus was going, Jesus, when they, they accused Jesus of casting out devils by Bezebel, the prince of devils, Jesus laughed and said to them, If I, by the Spirit of God, cast out devils, then the kingdom of God is what? Come upon you. So it's kingdom of God overcoming the kingdom of devil. Superposing so that, that person, like I mean, like, you know, many people, like for example, there was this um, the, the mad man that had a lot of demons. When Jesus drove away the demons from him, he, he, the Bible says he was back in his right mind, peace was in his mind. The kingdom of God, he experienced the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord, hallelujah! So, there's a battle, brethren. That's why evangelism. Winning souls, converting souls, discipline, um, discipling souls to retain them is very, very important. Hallelujah. Now, when you hear warfare and you hear, you think, oh, I'm, here, I'm here now, where's my weapon? You know, you think, people, people think physically. No. It's a spiritual warfare. I say it's a spiritual warfare. It's a warfare of words. You've got to, got to catch this. It's a warfare of what? Words. All right, some people feel. Okay, let's look at. Um, okay. Let's look at Genesis. Chapter 32. And sometimes people think, oh, Satan is so powerful. I ah, fight angel. Hey, the angel couldn't defeat him. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not according to my Bible. Not according to my Bible. We'll see shortly. I mean, I first remember when Jacob dreamt and the angel came to him. Do you remember that, that scripture? Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. Let's pick it up from there. Uh, it says, and Jacob was left alone, and, and he wrestled. He wrestled. And it says, Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until 
breaking of the day. He wrestled a man with him until what? The breaking of the day. That man was actually an angel. Okay, we continue to verse 25. It says, And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he prevailed, this man did not prevail against Jacob. Remember, we read just a few minutes ago in Revelation chapter 12, where it says, And the dragon fought and, he, and, and his angel against Michael and his angel, and he prevailed not. He couldn't prevail. But he's saying here, that, and, 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 and when we saw that he, that he and when he saw that he prevailed not prevailed not against him, he touched the whole of his thigh, and the whole of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. We read here; it seems to be as if it was like upper court, lower court, that kind of fighting, but that's not what was happening. There. Praise the Lord. Verse 26, and he said, let me go. This man is telling Jacob, let me go, for they break it. And he said, I will not let thee go, except you what? Bless me. So when you see, read that scripture, it seems as if it was a physical fight. That, you know, but let's look at the commentary on that from Hosea chapter 12. The commentary on that, on that wrestle. And we see what the wrestling was really about. It was words, it was dispute, it was debate, it was like argument, it was like presenting his case, so to speak. Look at it. Hosea chapter 12, verse 4. Talking about, okay, let's... Let's pick up from verse 2 so we can see the contest. And the Lord has also a controversy with Judah. And he will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings. He will, will he recompense him. He took, his brothers, he took his brother by the heel in the womb. And by his strength, he had power. By his strength, he had power with God. By his strength. This man had power with God. What strength is he talking about? The Bible tells us in some... Eight. He says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained what? Strength. The strength was in his mouth. He was able to argue his case. You, you, you see, when, as you read on, you see. He says, yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplications. That was, that was the battle. He was, he was petitioning God. No, no, no. God, the angel said, so, no, 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 you can't go. You must bless me. He says, I need to go there. No, you must bless me. And then the angel, when the angel now gave into his request, he prevailed. The strength was in his mouth. Some of us, we, 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 we don't know how to petition God. We petition God for one minute. And say, oh, God. Oh, if God was just here. Oh, if somebody was here to help me. And he's in you there. Where else can he be? He's in you. You're thinking, oh, if God could come from heaven. He says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, I have ordained strength. The strength is in your mouth. The power is in your mouth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must learn to use our words rightly. We must learn to use our words rightly. So our warfare, when we talk about this warfare, is a warfare of words. It could be, let me just put it, let's just put it practically. Say, say you went to a doctor. Say you went to a doctor. And they say, oh, Mr. Oh, 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 oh. We test your blood and we saw this, this, that, 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 that. that. Ah. If you don't know who you are, immediately your heart will just sink. You think, ah, you see, but this is incurable. The heart will just sink. Because he has, he has given you a, 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 a report that there is no hope. But the Bible tells us that whose report will you believe? But if you're a Christian, you go and look for your report. What God says about you. And you begin to say. And you be, I remember Sister Gertrude's um, testimony. How she had a, a, a lump in her. And this was said it was a growth. And she just kept on speaking the word to it. Speaking the word to it. Speaking the word to it. And she didn't tell anybody. Speaking the word to it. In her room, in her closet. All of a sudden. And, he, and I said she was speaking. He was getting bigger. She said to her husband. So look at it, and you don't say, I can't tell what they said, the testimony, but the husband didn't really pay more attention, but as she kept on, 
She was at that, that tumor. With her words. I said with her words. She cut it off. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that's what we're talking about. It's, it's, it's a warfare of words. Of words. Don't give in. Don't give in. Remember we saw something in, in Daniel chapter 7, remember? Let me, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7. We're talking about how the strategy of this, our adversary, the devil, how he, he, he comes with words, with his tongue, with thoughts, throwing thoughts into your, our people's mind. You know, try to wear them out. <laughs> you can't wear me out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 7. Then you're talking about, about the beast. It says in verse 8, it says, I considered the horns, and behold, there was they, they came up among them another little horn. We're talking about we're talking about powers. Horns talking about powers, authorities, kingdoms, before whom there were three of the first horn plucked up by their roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man. And a mouth speaking what? Great things. That's pompous things. Speaking blaspheming things. Just being blasphemous. Look at verse 20, 20, 24. Of the same chapter. Before we get to 24, let's look at verse 21. 21. Look at 21. And I behold, and the same horn made war. What did he do? With the saints. That same beast is that beast that was in Revelation. Making war with the saints and prevailed against them. In this particular case, how? With words. Look at verse 22. Until the ancient of days came. And, oh, hallelujah. And judgment was given to the saints. That is the kingdom was given to the saints of the Most High. We have the kingdom now. We are now in this part. We have the kingdom now. And the time came, the saint possessed the kingdom. Glory be to God. This horn, in verse 25, look at what he did. And he, he, and he, he shall speak great words against the Most High. His words, just speaking, just speaking useless words. Have you ever thought about something you, you, you think about? Maybe any time in your life you've made a mistake, you failed. And you mistakenly somehow your, that thought comes to your mind. Before you know it, streams, streams of other thought of failure overwhelms you. And if you're not careful to say, get yourself together and say no, and, and speak well, say no, not my mind. And don't give Satan place in your mind. For you know, hey, you remember, it, 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 it goes back to 1960 something. Bringing all the thoughts back. You know when you were in school and you didn't pass your mass exam? Bring, bring all those and put people and, you, and, and, you, and, you, and, you, and they're coming to your mind. You're, you're, you're trying to think. And before you know it, the Bible talks about, tells us that, it tells us in Proverbs, this anxiety weighs a man's spirit down. So you bring all the thoughts. What? You want, to weigh, you want to wear your spirit, weighs it down. And then they attacks. But if you know who you are, you say, no, Satan in Jesus' name, come out. Stop it. Praise the Lord. And immediately he stops. I say that he's speaking. That's the warfare. Words. He's speaking words against us. Against the Most High. <laughs> Do you remember in the same psalm we looked, I just quoted before, Psalm 8 says, out of the mouth of babe and suckling, that was all this strength. To do what? To what? Silent. You remember that scripture? Let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. That's the warfare. That's what we're dealing with. You silence that enemy. You silence that voice. I said you silence that voice. Look at it. Psalm 8 verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemy. That what? That thou mayest what? Steal the enemy and the avenger to silence them. That voice is coming in your mind. Say, shh, no. In Jesus' name, shut up. Come out of my mind. Come, not, not my mind. Hallelujah. If you don't, if you don't, you, you, you will, <laughs> it, will be, it will be terrible. You see, 
You know, in the Old Testament, God gave us a picture. A picture. He told the children of Israel, drive out the Amalek. Drive out the Hittite. Drive out the Jebusite. See, if you don't drive them out, what would they be? See, they will become a thorn. And thesis. A thorn in your flesh. That's how they, that's, that's, if you don't drive this, this unclean spirit out, they be, they, what they then they become, they, 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 could become, they come to harassment. Harass your finances. Harass your business. Harass your, your wife. Harass your children. Praise the Lord. So we must understand that the warfare we're talking about is a warfare that we use words. Look at um, Revelation chapter 13. Just to tell you this, how this thing, um, how it works. <clears throat> Glory be to God. Uh, hallelujah. It says, let's pick up from, from, from verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, remember, what you, remember we know the dragon, we fear, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Says, and I saw one of his head as it were wounded, to, as it were wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. This is, this is going to happen, you know. <laughs> glory to God. Oh, glory to God. That's why we're studying this thing so we know we can't be deceived. We cannot. God has given us the plan from the beginning to the end that we, we, are, we are pre-informed. Look at what it says, verse 4. It says, And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast. How did they worship him? Saying. When we say, let's worship God. Let's, when you look at it. They worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? When you begin to find yourself saying something like that, you know you are worshiping that thing. Say, ah, who, who is like this? This may say this. Man, this may say this is so good, man. There's no car like it. <laughs> Glory to God. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is, who is able to make war with him? Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth. Are you, are you with me? A mouth. Speaking what? Great things and blasphemies. Verse 6. And, said, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name and his, his tabernacle. And they that dwell in heaven. Just start talking. You know, sometimes we go evangelizing somebody, so you meet some guys in town. They tell you, we've seen them. You say, there's no God. If there's God, why is there all these wars? They tell you, religion is the problem. We've, gone, we've met people just trying to win them. Say, religion is the problem of the world. All the wars is religion. I try to tell them, look, Christianity, we're not talking, it's not a religion. It's a relationship. They're like, no, 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 no. Christianity is one of them. You see, they begin to blaspheme. Hallelujah. And so we, we, we it's words. It's words. So let, your, let, not, let the word of the Lord that's in your mouth, let it not depart out of your mouth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. So we use words. Words. You remember in Zechariah chapter 3 where Joshua was standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan came there to accuse him. To oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. This Joshua was a branch that was redeemed, that was rescued from the fire. And the Lord said to, to the, the men that was around, they said, take out his 50 rag, put him a garment upon him, and righteousness. And I told Joshua, Joshua, understand now that you are righteous. Understanding righteousness is very important in this world. Very important. You must know who you are. This righteousness is not because you kept the Ten Commandments or because you were good. You never stole before. You never did anything bad. No. It's Jesus Christ's righteousness imputed to you. Praise the Lord. So, we, we come to understand that this our welfare of words. All right, look at 
um, First Corinthians chapter 15. I want to look at an example in real life of a person that fought this war, that, that fought. I know we've quoted that scripture. You know, it says, how great, so mightily grew the word of God. Um, you know that scripture, don't you? It's on, our, it's on, on one of our, um, our promo where our pastor uses. How did it prevail? How did it prevail? Paul was the one that made that statement. He said, in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God, and what? Prevail. What happened in Ephesus? You've got to understand, Ephesus was a land, a place where they worshipped idols so terribly. Let's look at it. Um, First Corinthians chapter 15. They worship idols. Look at, Paul, look at Paul's remark when it Chapter 15, verse 32. He said, If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? Well, yeah, you think maybe you were fighting maybe lion or, or tiger. No, no, no. We read in the Revelation, we saw we, saw, we heard the word beast, 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 beast. beast. Remember? These are spiritual beings. He fought them. He fought them with the word of God. Until the word of God prevailed in that place. He fought them. Let's look at the result in Acts chapter 19. You see it there. When Paul made that statement so much, go, 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 let's just turn back to Acts chapter 19. That city of Ephesus was, they had the God, they call it Diane, which they worship. <laughs> They worship that God. They, they always praise it that, that this Diane was, was, was the God that blessed them, that made them prosper. And they, was, they, they were just worshiping idols. Look at um, Acts chapter 19. We go from verse 18. All right, let's do from 17. So we know that we're talking about Ephesus, okay? Verse 17. It says, it says, it says and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling what? Ephesus. So we're talking about the same place as in First Corinthians chapter 15, yeah? And, and, and fear fell on, fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was what? Magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many, listen now, listen now, many of them also who used curious arts brought their books. That is, those who are doing divination, magical arts, because those are spirits doing those things. They brought their books together and they bound them before all men. And they counted the price of, of the book and it was found to be 50,000 pieces of silver. Verse 20 says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. You see, it was a warfare. The guy was praying and dealing with those, those, those beasts until the name of God, Jesus Christ, was pre- prevailed over 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 um, um, Dan. Dan was the God there. If you look at look at um, 20, 25, same chapter, verse twenty five. You see when um, when they mention the name of Dan there. Oh, no, let's verse twenty. Let's pick up from okay, verse twenty five. Hmm. Okay, verse twenty four. Give us a, a clear picture. It says. For a, for, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silver smith, which made silver strides. Are you with me? That was his work. He was, he was working for Diane, the goddess of heaven. Brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. That is, they were, they were profiting by that act. You see? And so when, when, when and you go down to 28. And when they heard these things, they were full. When, when they saw that the word of God has prevailed, their act of making strides, the trade what died. Nobody was going to um, die strides anymore. <laughs> Nobody was going there anymore. The trade died. And so they were angry. Look at verse 28. And when they heard these things, these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, Great is Diane of Ephesus. <laughs> you know. So the city was full of com- uh, confusion. But then, the word of God has already prevailed. The name of Jesus Christ has replaced the name of Dan in that place. You see? So that's what we're talking about these things. It's, it's bringing the name of Jesus. Bringing the kingdom into the hearts of men. Into the, your city where you dwell. 
that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what we are about. Bringing, making the name of Jesus Christ heard all across our towns where we're living. We know the story of Job. Talking about demonic activity. We saw the story of Job when the sons of God came to meet together. They had a meeting and Satan came there. You remember the story? Job chapter 1. God called the meeting. The children of God were there. Satan came to their midst. And God started asking Satan, have you tempted, have you tried my servant Job? Satan said to God, oh, he said, you know, you've protected him, you've formed an edge on him, you've blessed him, you've prospered him. How will, how will he not serve you? He said, give me, some, let me, give me the, 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 the privilege to strike him. He will curse you. God said, no. And so he left and did naturally. What it seems to be natural, the servants, these men came into Job's farm, killed all the servants, took all his herd. Now, it just seemed as if it was a natural occurrence, but Satan was behind the attack. We saw in, in, in 1 Kings chapter 18, where um, Jehoshaphat and King, King Ahab, when they came to the place, when King Ahab asked Jehoshaphat, will you go to, go to war with me? He went to visit him because he was his father-in-law. And he said, I will go. We are one. And he went. And they did not know that it was already prearranged in the spirit that the lying spirit will come and be in the mouth of all the prophets. So I'm just trying to tell you that things that seems natural, natural, just natural occurrence, there's a spirit behind it. There's a spirit behind it. And it takes the Holy Ghost to open your eye to see where that, where that thing is, where, what's happening. For example, Peter, one moment he's saying, Jesus, you are Lord. The next few verses, he says, he says, no, don't go to, to die. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. One moment, God is revealing himself to him. The next moment, Satan is, is using Peter. The same vessel. I said, the same vessel. <laughs> so, what are we saying? We're saying that this is how it's happening. That except one, Jesus Christ was, you know, in the spirit, he just, he just discerned that I was Satan talking. He, knew, he just spoke to Peter. Peter said, Satan, get behind me. You are an offense. Satan's most, the first one is offense. It causes offense. Offense. Why? To steal the word of God. Jesus Christ said, offense must come. Offense. He said, Jesus said, it's impossible for offense not to come. He says, woe to him through which offense come. Offense must come. What, coming to war to steal the word. That's why we should try not to be offended. Because once you get offended, all the scripture we've been learning, all the things we've been learning, I just leave there. Somebody opened the gate and just, mis- just acted funny to you. You just get offended. It just comes. All the things we've been learning, it steals them away. So we don't get offended. We just watch out not to get offended. Praise the Lord. And so we saw how Satan did that. Um, even, even, even how Satan moved David to, to number the children of Israel. David did not know that was Satan. You see? So demonic activities, just things happen naturally, but there's a spirit behind it. There's a spirit behind it. Praise God. All sick, I mean, I can say that I mean, 99.9% of sickness and disease is from the devil. Some, some will say, some will say, well, what, what, if, what, if, what if it's my diet that's causing it? Sometimes, Demonic activities in people's mind, causing them to like one particular food that will kill them. Have you seen people that are obese? As, as fat as they are, the parents will still bring like 20 pieces. And they're, still, they're killing themselves. You know, sometimes you see, when, when, when you cannot say no, somebody's taking your will over. That's demonic. Because God Himself would not force you to, to do anything. When you can no longer say no, even you are drinking or smoking or whatever your habit you have dissolved, I cannot say I've had enough of you, I want to stop it. You know, like, there's, a, there's a spirit behind that. There's a spirit behind it. Controlling that person to just, the person sitting there and watching telly, it's tenders. All of a sudden, they go to the fridge, drink that thing, and go sit down again. And, and, and then all of a sudden, it, it, 
He hears, in the, he hears in a whisper. Go back. He don't, he don't talk 30 minutes. He, he, he pauses the television. Go back. He's, he's being controlled. And he doesn't know that he's being controlled. And all of a sudden he says, oh, I'm, I'm size 12 now. From five size 8. Oh, where, where were you? Is it, is, is, is it by force? You know what I'm saying? He says, you know, so we, we need to, you know, we, Bible says if, if a man is given to appetite, it's a control his tongue. In proverb. If, you are given to, if I, a man is given to appetite, you should be able to control your appetite. If you're not able to control it, then you know that something is behind it. Pushing you to do the things and you, and you, you don't want to do it. Praise the Lord. And so, let's quickly just run off. Let's look at our... Um, um, you know I was going to go there, Ephesians chapter 6. Let was run off here. It would be a good place to stop. Ephesians chapter 6. Praise the Lord. It says, finally, my brethren, verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Did this say you should be strong in your own muscles or in your academics or qualification? No, be strong in the Lord. How? You just say, I am strong in the Lord. It's, it's that, that's how it works. You say, I am strong in the Lord. I am strong in the power of his might. That's what you just, you just said. Start with your mouth. Praise God. And then he tells us, put on the whole armor of God. You know, we have some army personnel here. They've been to various wars, defending, the, defending her, her majesty, the queen, the crown. And they know that there's a difference between armor and weapon. You know, armor is something you use to protect yourself, isn't it? Am I right? And then weapon is what you use for offensive. Praise God. But he says, now put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Fight the, the, against the wise of the devil. Eh? Someone said, I've been fi- ah, someone said, man. Someone said, Pastor, I've been fighting the devil. And I've been fighting him all night. He didn't say you should fight here. He said you should what? Stand. Stand against his, his skin. Stand. What does it mean to stand? It doesn't mean standing. I'm standing now. Yeah, I'm standing. You stand with words. I said you stand with words. Oh, let me show you. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 25. I just want to show you how you stand. You take your stand with your words. In, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord was speaking to the children of Israel that if a, a man marries, it doesn't apply these days, praise the Lord. If a man marries a woman and for some reason the man dies and the man didn't have a child, the next of king, the younger brother next to that man, will take that child, a woman and marry the woman and have a child. The first child will be named after that man that died so that that man's name will not be wiped away from the children of Israel. And so the custom was, if the man then take his stand and persistently say he doesn't want to marry the woman, that's by taking his stand, they will have to bring the man the woman, will take the, the woman will take the man to the council of elders at the city gate and say, look, my, bro, my husband he was dead and the younger brother had failed to perform the duty of the nest of king. And then the elders will ask and say, do you want to take this woman? And if he continue to take his stand saying no, the woman will now take off the man's shoes, spit on his face and slap him publicly. <laughs> it's a disgrace. This might say a disgrace to Israel. <laughs> Look at the story. It's a very interesting story. But the man has refused to marry the woman. Look at it. Look at, look at it. John 25. Look at verse 8. So I'm trying to tell you how do you take your stand? By speaking. By saying. Look at it. John 25, verse 8. So you've got to say. He says, then, verse 8, he says, then the elders of the city shall call him, that's the man, and, and speak to, unto him and say, and, and, and if he stands to it and say, are you with me? 
You take a stand by saying. And say, no, not in this place. Not in my marriage. Not in my home. Not in my mind. You have taken your stand. I said, you have taken your stand and say, no. Glory be to God. If you stand to it and say, I like not take her. Or I, would, I don't want to take her for a wife. Basically. So that's how you take your stand. So when the Bible says, we go back again, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. The, the schemes of the devil. When it comes with thought in your mind, when it comes with, you know, with words, somebody comes to tell you, look, you, know, you, you, you don't qualify for, for, this, for this job or for this thing. Jesus qualified us. I said, Jesus qualified us. We are heirs of God. Jesus qualified us. So you come and you say, no. You go to your club and say, no. Jesus qualified me. I'm Abraham's seed. Glory be to God. So you take your stand against him. Zena verse 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting against you. You see, there's a spirit that's causing that person. Remember Jesus Christ, when he was hanging on the tree, what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them. Yeah? For they do not know what they're doing. It's not them. There's a spirit causing them to do this thing. Somebody offend you. Don't say, Father, forgive them. Forgive that. He doesn't know what he's doing. If he knew that we are one, he won't offend me. Are you with me? If he knew that he's my brother or he's my sister, he would not offend me. So he's offending me. He doesn't know what he's doing. Praise the Lord. So he says, for we're not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in where? In the heavenly high places. And remember, we are seated with Christ in where? In the high places. So, he said then, verse 13, wherefore take unto you some armor of God. And the whole. So what if I don't take the whole? I'm a, I'm, I'm a half, there might be a casualty. Huh? There might be a casualty. And how do you take it? With your words. I say with your words. Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter, Matthew chapter 6, he says, why take you thought? Say. Are you with me? Jesus said, why do you take a thought? You say it. When you, take that, when you say it, you're taking that thought. So he said, take all the armor. You, you, you say it. The whole armor of God that, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. I haven't done all what to, to fight. To keep standing. To keep saying the same thing. Keep, don't, Bible says, in Hebrew, it says, cast not away thy confidence in God, which have great recompense of reward. For after you've done the will of God, you have need of what? Faith and patience to inherit it. You need that too to work with you. Don't cast away your confidence. Keep saying what God said to you. Maybe a day, two days, three days, keep saying it. And to come to tell you, that word will prevail. You, 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 you now say to yourself, so much the word of God in Braleo and prevailed. Or you cannot say so much the word of God in my finances and prevail. Glory be to God. So it says, stand therefore having your, le- your leons get with about with what? Truth. Yeah? Truth. When I thought about that, I said, Lord, see your leons. What? See, I have like a belt of truth. And I thought about it, truth. What does that mean? What? I was thinking, Lord, what is that? Know the truth about who you are. I want to say, let me show you this. You know, we, the, the leons here is where the seed comes from. Are you with me? Oh, glory to God. Let's look at it. Let us rush. Okay, Jeremiah chapter. Can we have Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 6, please? The Bible, Jesus Christ said, You shall not join, you shall, it shall make you what? Free. No, you already know you are of God. God is the one that gives birth to you. Leons. You came out from his leons. Are you with me? We came out from his leons. We are born of the incorruptible seed. We are born of incorruptible seed. The sperm of God gave birth to us. And the sperm comes from his leons. Look at this. Ask now and see whether a man do travel with child. All right? Wherefore do I see every man with his hand on his leons? As if he's going to give birth. Are you with me? So, 
Know the truth about where you come from. You come from God. You come from God. And whatsoever is born of God has overcome the world. Praise the Lord. So get that truth around you all the time. You see, have the breastplate of righteousness. You see, all this weapon that you're talking about, this almond, they protect an organ of the human anatomy. The breastplate protects which organ? The heart. The heart. The heart. And it's very important. We're talking about righteousness. Righteousness in the heart, that does this with condemnation. Guilt. I've never felt guilty before. <laughs> if you do, repent. Glory to God. Let me show you. Um, Job chapter 27. Can we have Job chapter 27, please? Job 27, verse 6. You know, Job's, if you read Job's story, understand that it was a spiritual warfare. Go and read, you see, it was all, it was all spiritual warfare. They were trying to come to Job. Job, you have seen. Job, you have done this. Job, Job was like, no, no, no. Job took his stand. No, no. Job said, no, no, no. Look at, look at it. Job said, my righteousness. Of course, Job's righteousness did not come from Job's work. If you read chapter 1, the Lord said to Satan, have you tried Job a righteous man? Are you with me? God was the one that made him righteous. The righteousness that Job had came from God. So Job said, my righteousness, I will hold what? Fast. I will not let it go. Some of us are so quick to let our righteousness go. When you make an error, you just say, oh, I blew it. And you feel so bad. And before you repent, it's been two days. And then Satan is, is struck. My heart shall not what? Reproach me. And I shall just say, condemn me as long as I live. When you have that breastplate on properly, there's no condemnation. If you, if, 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 you're, if, if, if you feel you've done something bad, you quickly repent. And take away that guilt. Are you with me? Because it's, it's, it's an armor. If you don't do it, the enemy comes. Before you know, he, 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 he'll attack. And it's, it's relentless. In, the, in its attack. Praise the Lord. And then you say your feet should be stored with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Always be ready to evangelize. It's, 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 a part of the, it's part of the weapon. Always, they say, let's evangelize. Be, be, talking about Jesus Christ is part of it. Are you with me? It's part of it. When you say, let's go and evangelize, let's go and witness, let's go to town. Be willing. Because it's a part of your, 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 the, the, the weapon, your, your way of waging the war. Glory be to God. And above all, it says, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. The Bible says, if you have faith, as small as the most has it, what will you do? You will say. Eh? You will say. You will say something. Take the shield of faith. Say. David said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. And that's it. because I said that, it says, surely. Because Psalm 91 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Say, because I have said that, it says, surely He shall deliver me from the snail of the followers. So you have to say. Glory be to God. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you are able to what? Quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. You just quench it. And it comes up like you just, you just speak. All the thought it comes to your mind. Oh, you, you, know, you, 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 didn't, you didn't pray. <laughs> Maybe you're supposed to pray. You go pray at 10 o'clock and you, you slept. It brings a guilt in your mind. You didn't pray your 10 o'clock. You pray your 12 o'clock one. Maybe you just slept. You didn't pray your, your 10 o'clock. He said, see, everybody's praying all around the world. You are sleeping. <laughs> It brings us condemnation. Makes you feel bad. Praise the Lord. He said, take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation. How many people here got saved by doing work? You did something and God then saved you. Hmm? How many people? You, 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 you walked and God then saved you. Huh? Say, take that helmet of salvation. Let, let your thinking know how you were saved. Look at our last scripture, Timothy chapter 3. Can we have that, please? Let your mind know the, the way you got saved. Don't forget how you got saved. Put on a helmet, helmet, it covers your head, your mind. Look at it, Timothy chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Can we have it on the screen, please? Three, Timothy chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. And we're going to pray. Timothy, no, sorry, I beg, I beg your pardon. 
Titus chapter 3. I beg your pardon. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Verse 3 to 5. 3, okay. 3 to 5, please. 3 to 5. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. You know, sometimes when you get, when you get saved, you forget that you were once foolish. When somebody asks for you, you get offended. You forget that you were once like those people. You see? You see, you see for we ourselves, was, we were also once sometimes foolish. Disobedient, you see? We were once like that. So be passionate, be, be compassionate, be gentle, be, be tenderly hearted towards the people. It says sometimes we we're, sometimes we were deceived, saving what diverse lusts and pleasures, going to clubs, smoking, drinking, doing all sorts of things. We were, we were once like that. So we first forget that we were once like that. When you want to minister to somebody that's like that, you are not showing compassion. You are so hard, as if you saved yourself. It says, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. Verse 4. But after that, what happened? The kindness and the love of God, our Savior, towards men, what? Appeared. The kindness and the love of God appeared to you and saved you. Look at verse 5. Not by the works of righteousness which we have done. He didn't come to you because you were, you were good. No. He loved you. And he still loves you. And he came to you. But according to his mercy, he what? Saved us. By the washing of generation and by renewing of the Holy Ghost. So you had that constantly in your mind. How you got saved. So because sometimes the enemy can push us. And it not make, not make you to want to work for your salvation. To earn it. After you, when you got it, initially he didn't work for it. Now he's not trying to tell you, you have to work. You have to do many, many you to, you know, activities. You to, no, 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 no. That's what the scripture the, the kindness and the love of God appeared to us and saved us. Not by the things we've done. He just saved us because he loved us. So the trap is sometimes the enemy comes on to make you not want to earn. That's why you have to be very. You know, and, in, and the last they says, take the, the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the rhema of God. So this 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 one is, I mean, we'll conclude this now so that we know how. We, 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 when we talk about our warfare, where we, who are we, we are fighting against? Sometimes the warfare is in the mind. Are you with me? It's not always in the mind. Sometimes it's in the body. I shared a testimony of how I was going to an Asian shop to buy some African food. I was walking with my wife, and all of a sudden, it's like somebody shot an arrow into my leg. And I shouted, Ah, oh, Jesus! And Jesus then come out. And not long after that, the pain came out. You know, sometimes growth, growth that comes it's spiritually. It's an arrow shot. It's a pain. Look at people giving testimony in school. Say, uh, 1997, there was a pain. Say, uh, it, it, it was a pain just with a small pain. The next thing, the person is crippled. The next thing is crippled. So that devil has attacked that body and crippled the person. The person's mind might be sound. No, the person's mind is thinking well, everything is fine, but the body is being afflicted. Are you with me? Remember that woman that was bound for 18, 18 years, the, the daughter of Abraham? She was bound for 18 years by Satan. 18 years, bound in her body. So we should not give him any place in our mind, in our body, in our we shouldn't give him any place at all. Praise the Lord. We shouldn't give him any place. So let's start off on our feet. Let's pray. Let's make prophetic declaration. Prophetic declaration. Declare with your mouth what you want to see in your life. Declare.